Okay guys, this is the water we mixed yesterday. There's the refractometer, and I'm putting a few drops on it now to test it, uh, to test the specific gravity. I have to say yesterday I hit it right on the money. I tested it last night. It was 1.025, which is exactly what we wanted. I guess I got lucky. Uh, you put that up to your eye. This is kind of poor videography there, but uh, when you look through it, you'll see a graph. You see the numbers. Here's the temperature of the water, which matches my aquarium. Okay. The first thing I do is disconnect the skimmer from the air hose. Uh, this has got a wood air stone in it. And I just disconnect that. That's the hose down to the air pump. Um, I leave all the pumps on for now. I remove the skimmer. And as you can see, that removed, this is from uh, a week ago. So that's quite a bit uh, for one week in a small aquarium. Cleaning the skimmer is really straightforward, so I won't put that in the video. It's very simple. You clean the inside and that's it. You put it back together again. Uh, I'll take this out. This is the whole skimmer holder. And in here is a filter sock. Uh, but I will leave that in during the glass cleaning process. Uh, what I will do is turn the vortex up quite a bit higher than normal so it keeps things suspended. It keeps the particulate suspended in detritus so it'll carry it into the filter sock. And this is what I use to clean the glass. Okay, this is going to be a sped up version of the glass cleaning, but I like to keep the front and two sides perfectly clean. I don't let any growth of algae on it because it reflects from the inside and makes the aquarium look a lot bigger. I clean the back also. I leave that uh, black. Now I'm pulling out some Chetomorpha. Uh, that's my refugium. I use that center uh, compartment there. Uh, to grow Chetomorpha, and that's the light that I was pulling off. I'm showing you a little um, brittle starfish uh, that I get quite a few of them. They're real tiny. They grow in there. So what I'm going to do now is pull the Cheto apart, usually in half, put half back in, and then I usually dispense of uh, the rest of it. Uh, here I'm just showing you you know, that it's nice and green. This little brush I use to clean the ATO sensor uh, it works on a sensor when the water level drops below. My ATO fills it up. We can do a video on that. I can show you that. Now I'm just cleaning these new uh, rock that I put in so I could grow some Acropora. I had no room, and if you'll notice, uh, my green star polyp actually was all connected in there and I had to go in and rip out, actually prune it like a weed, rip it out so I could put these new rocks in. You know, you can't just lay them on top. I've actually cemented them in uh, and then put those two flatter ones on top of the rocks underneath. So it gives me uh, more room to try the Acropora. And I'm just scraping this algae off. It's not hair algae. It's actually not a problematic algae. I just don't like the way it looks and there's a little too much of it. And I believe it formed because I did what I probably shouldn't have done is I <clears throat> did too many things uh, right away. I upped my lighting when I put the acros in and I think that encouraged the algae to grow. So here I'm taking out the filter sock. I've turned the pumps off. So... Most of what I was doing in the aquarium with the cleaning the glass and the rocks, uh, that was all suspended and was collected in the uh, filter sock. And you can see how dark it is uh, later on in the video when I put a, a new one in. You'll see the new ones are bright white. These in three days, that's from Wednesday. Now I'm ready to start the water change. I'm going to start the siphon. I cut that out. I do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> but uh, I've tried those pump 
type things. They just never seem to work for me. So I do it the old fashioned way. Uh, you know, I suck on the end and I usually don't get it, uh, get any inside in my mouth. So now I'm just letting it fill into the bucket. Uh, there was the filter sock. Uh, what I've done is I've put it back down inside uh, the overflow. Sediment can cl collect detritus. Stuff can collect in the back compartments. Uh, you'll notice I don't go inside the refugium. I like to leave that alone. I don't want to suck any pods out or anything in there. This is uh, down in the compartment where the return pump is. And a lot of times detritus can collect in there. So I stick it all the way down in there and siphon that out. And it's quite a bit of water. Here I'm siphoning off the rocks to get as much detritus as I can off and lowering the water level just before the coral start. You can expose coral, but I don't always like to. So that's about five gallons right there uh, from what I did, uh, from what I removed and made. And I show you here that you can see what I do is I get two of the same buckets and uh, I match the amount of water in both so I know I'm replacing the same amount and here I use a small plastic container uh, to refill from my fresh salt water and uh, I put it in one at a time what I do here is I pour it in uh, areas where I think could be you know the, I could blast the uh, detritus off I do this each week so uh, some weeks more come out than others I'm noticing this week not as much came out because I did it Wednesday. Uh, but this is a good method to release stuff that settles in the cracks in your rocks. Uh, I usually do it uh, during the water change like this. Uh, I try not to hit the, uh, the coral. Some of the soft coral don't, uh, doesn't matter at all. And here's, I, when it gets light enough, I lift it up, I turn the pumps back on, and I fill it and keep an eye on it so it just goes level in the back uh, with the ATO sensor. So then I know that I'm uh, filled up to where I need to be. Here's the two filter socks, one from Wednesday, which I uh, replace and one from today's water change, I'll put them in the washer. Here's a new one, a clean one. You can see the difference from before, how much cleaner that is. And that's how clean they get when uh, I take them out of the washer. Um, here I'm just placing it inside the compartment, straight down, uh, no big deal. Uh, here's the skimmer, I had cleaned it. And basically, that's all the skimmer is. It's, uh, you know, the air stone on a rigid tube. It goes down inside. You push the top on. You put the uh, hose back on. I have a little hose cleaner I stick down in there to keep that clean. And then I have this little, you could use any container. Uh, I was dosing vodka with that. At one time, that's actually a vo vodka bottle, Majorska. Uh, I was trying to attempt to do a little vodka dosing, uh, experimenting uh, some months back, and I I stopped. My nitrate was low enough. It's you can use that to tr uh, help reduce nitrates, uh, but actually I don't have any. So now I'm putting the, the little uh, holder skimmer holder back in. And then the skimmer I put right down inside the filter sock. I mentioned this in my other video. Uh, I believe that really helps because uh, you want to place your skimmer right uh, as close to the overflow as you can, uh, even with a sump, uh, because most of the particulates are uh, suspended there, you know, because there's a lot of water movement. So uh, I put it right down inside of the filter sock and I've noticed it to run uh, much better. Uh, I get more schemate out of the skimmer. Okay guys, that's it for water change. If I've missed anything, maybe I can bring it up in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave some comments, questions, and I'll see you on the next one.